the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, real quickly, I just wanted to wrap this up with the series that we did, or that I did, on the, um, on the authentic prophecy in the church, and um, lining it up with scripture, uh, as well as um, implementing the rule of St. Teresa of Avila. And uh, anyway, I just hope you, I wanted to say it, I hope you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, enjoyed them. And, uh, you know, it, uh, I think it shed some light on some things. Um, and it, it still, it still continuing to do so. Um, there were some questions uh, about the, the white horse, the rider and the white horse that's given a crown. Um, you know, I want to make clear that in no way did I say or that, you know, for sure this is a, a monarch king. Um, what I did was look at it from a different perspective. And I think that's one of the ways to really approach scripture is to look at it from every different possible angle that you, that you can in order to come to truth. Now, it's not saying that one angle is wrong and one angle is right. Very often, two or three different angles are right and sheds light on, on the whole truth. Um, I think that, uh, how do I say, looking into these prophecies of a monarch king and that, I, for me anyway, you know, it really opened up a lot of uh, Revelation 12. And um, I, again, I don't know that I'll be able to look at it another way. You know, um, I know that it led to opening some scripture um, to me. Um, I do want to say that I think it's important um, to, to know the difference between study, okay, and, and um, in an, an obsession. Because there seems to be, like I say, and this has been going on for quite some time, it's not the first time I'm gonna say this, but if we're spending the majority of our time on the internet going looking for this message and that message and you know this interpretation and that interpretation, then we're really not doing what we need to be doing. And, and that's spending the majority of our time in prayer and reflection um, before the Blessed Sacrament, reading scripture, uh, fasting, praying the rosary, praying the chaplet, um, and, uh, and really doing deep, deep self-reflections. And, and it, I, I, to be honest with you, I believe it's one of the ways that the devil today is used, or one of the ways that, that, that Satan is using today um, to distract people. Um, I am hoping that uh, with the video series that I did on the apocalypse, um, just that portion, and um, I'm hoping that everybody kind of heard because within those uh, videos, it is very, very clear that, um, how do I say, certain facts have been shown and made using scripture and authentic prophecy within the church that really, um, how do I say, um, exposes um, false messages and, and timelines and things of that nature. Um, so, you know, as far as putting things on a, uh, like a timeline or the order, I guess you can put the order uh, together. You know, that's not really hard to do. Um, but as far as saying, you know, when's this going to happen? When's this going to happen? When's this going to happen? Um, I would advise you that if there, you know, again, and I'm, I'm not the only one that would say this. I think, again, I saw a video with Marino Restrepo saying the same thing. If, if there are people are saying that you need to just stay away from it, you know, um, there are certain, um, uh, apparitions, okay, where, um, announcements have been promised. Again, just wait and see what happens. There's no reason to, uh, you know, to worry about things. The best thing to do is to pray and then there's no worry, then we're at peace. Um, that's the most important thing. And uh, so as, as far as, um, you know, seeking out the Antichrist was another, another thing. Um, wanting to know if he's alive today. He very well could be. I have no idea, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. You know, it, even in my own experiences, I, I spend more time praying for our country, um, praying for the church, 
um, praying for you guys and your intentions and um, praying for and hoping, you know, uh, that I find a, uh, um, you know, my future spouse. That's where, that's where the majority of my time is spent in prayer, not worrying about the Antichrist, not worrying where he's at, not worrying about this or that or the other. Um, so, you know, there are certain things, like I say, that, that are revealed. And I think even through authentic prophecy um, that we looked at within the Catholic Church, there's some things that are revealed, um, you know, as far as the church and persecution. Um, you know, I think that um, the fact that things will be very, very bad in the world, you know, when the first seal is opened is pretty, pretty obvious, you know, um, after again, after doing the study. Um, uh, but then again, you know, with the weapons that we have in the world today, that doesn't take a long time for things to go really bad, really fast. They can do that. But the point I'm trying to make is there's no, there's nothing wrong with studying the apocalypse or the apocalyptic writings, um, and, uh, and delving into those mysteries where it can get dangerous is when we start to listen to outside voices, um, you know, that have, um, uh, you know, that are giving dire warnings for tomorrow and, and things like that. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is we, you know, I could get in a car wreck tomorrow and die and that would be the end of me. Um, you know, so I would stand before the judgment seat of Christ and have to give an account for my life. And so just in my personal opinion, I think it's better to reflect on that the majority of the time rather than trying to find out how things work and figure out the entire apocalypse and and things like that. Like I say, I would be very, very wary of, of people that think they have everything figured out. The church has had this book, um, you know, we for 2,000 years, and it is a mystery, and it is something that, that's what the word apocalypse means, to unveil. That, that happens slowly and over a period of time. With that being said, I think the Lord's revealed some things here with the videos that we did. And, and I wouldn't say that if I didn't, um, absolutely believe it. Um, so, uh, anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. And, um, I, I, I had said in uh, one of the prior ones that I, you know, I will give you my idea or how I understand the series of events. And, um, I have no problem doing that. Okay. But notice that I said, this is how I understand what the Lord has revealed to me. That doesn't mean that I can't misunderstand what the Lord has revealed to me. And that's why prophecy, whether it be, um, you know, through locution or through vision or whatever it is, um, that all needs to be handed over to the church and those in authority within the church and let them figure that out. That's their job. That's not my job. Okay, my job is to, if the Lord decides to, to give me a, uh, a grace or something that falls in that, um, in that uh, category, my job is to give it to the church and then, and then go on from there. So I don't let these things rule my life. You know, I, I, as I said before, it is the last thing I think about when I go to sleep and it is the first thing I think about when I, when I get up, but I don't go through my day, you know, worrying about, uh, about things. I don't allow it to get me anxious, I guess is what I'd say. So, um, I guess if I were to, uh, just give you a concise version of how I understand, um, what the Lord has revealed to me in regards to these things, um, as well as, you know, my understanding of scripture, um, you know, I think it's all pretty clear in, in the gospel. And so, you know, it begins with war and we've seen war. We've had two world wars, you know, and we're on the verge of a third one. Um, the, the collapse of society. And um, again, this is a, a battle that is being uh, more and more revealed as a battle of morality and, and uh, purity versus impurity and um, the teachings of the church and the anti-teachings of the church. 
So um, there's no question in my mind that it's already begun. Um, you know, with we have you know with the great reset and all these things that these people are talking about. Um, you know, it's it's pretty obvious where it's going and, and what they want to do. Um, from there, you know, it leads to persecution. Now, with persecution, the, the church is probably being persecuted more now um, than it ever has been. And uh, we may not see it in the United States, but, you know, persecutions come in different forms. Um, that persecution will increase. Um I believe that um, that there will be a, a war, you know, um, that may begin or break out uh, first in the Middle East and then spread. Um, and, you know, along with this whole thing that's going on with Russia, whether or not that's the end of everything, I don't know. I have no idea. All I know is what I see. Um, I believe that Rome will fall. I believe that Jerusalem will be attacked or Israel will be attacked. Um, I believe that the warning, and again, this is just my understanding and my understanding alone. I'm not saying that this is fact. Um, it's very, very important to make that clear. Okay, I don't want anybody saying, well, Vince Sagala said. What I'm saying is this is how I understand what was shown to me, okay? And so, again, I'm human and I can misunderstand things no differently than the authentic prophets or in the Catholic Church or the mystics or the blesseds. Um, you know, they didn't even delve into whether they understood. They wrote down what they saw, what was there, and they gave it to those in the church, you know, or their, their writings fell into the, those within authority of the church. And so um, I forgot where I was. Um, I believe that the uh that the warning or the elimination of conscience whatever you want to call it um you know i refer to it as one of the days of the son of man is a singular grace to correct the conscience of the world i believe that happens very close to if not simultaneously with the abomination being set up um, with that being said i do not believe that the abomination will be set up in the temple in jerusalem i believe that the abomination will be set up um, in Rome and I have reasons for that that I'm not going to really get into but again it falls in line with authentic Catholic prophecy I'll just say that stick with the authentic prophets <laughs> one of the major messages that that um, that I did have access to or did read was La Salette I think La Salette has a lot more to do with today than it did then um, from doing the series and the study with the authentic prophets and then looking at scripture, it is very, very clear that there will be a battle that goes on um, for global control one way or the other um, between two armies, two earthly armies, as well as spiritual armies. Um, at the end of that, Jesus will come and he will destroy Antichrist, um, who from tradition, I believe, it's, I don't even know that it's prophetic, but it's from tradition, um, will attempt to ascend into heaven from, uh, from the very place Jesus did, from the Mount of Olives. Um, so um, there seems to be two different uh, battles, as I say. The period of peace, I think, is pretty much proven, not only with the scriptures, but authentic prophecy um, um, through the messages of Fatima. And I think it's a lot different than most people think. I think it's something major, okay? Um, I think one of the things that has also been proven is that Matthew 24, 29, 32, um, in the context that it's read in, um, cannot be the event of the warning. Um, I believe that uh, St. Faustina, and again, this is just my understanding, I believe St. Faustina was shown that event of um, Matthew 24, 29, 24, 29 through 32, with the son of the sign of the Son of Man appearing in the heavens. I believe it's the same thing, but I don't believe it's the event um, of the illumination of conscience. I believe that's a different sign that will convert the Jews, which has to happen just before the second coming, um, which Jesus told Faustina this will happen shortly before the last day. Um, so it kind of falls in line with that. 
Um, trying to think of where I left off here. Um, I believe that the period of peace will be a, a new existence or the beginning of something new in the world in a way that we've never seen before. It's kind of one of the steps or one of the stages of humanity getting back to the Garden of Eden. Um, so um, it's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, um, a second Pentecost, if you will. Um, and then going again from Scripture with the book of Revelation, there is obviously a um, another attack on um, what I believe would be Jerusalem or the holy city. They, you know, it's it's they call it the camp of the holy ones, um, but fire comes down from heaven to earth and destroys them. And, and again, that's something different than Jesus coming on the white horse and destroying the Antichrist with the breath of his mouth. Um, judging from scripture and the the way it's read and understanding that, you know, when I read through that prophet, I believe it was Zechariah or Isaiah, um, that people will live a very, very, very long time, um, but still die and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. It would seem to point to a period of peace that lasts a very long time. Um, and then from there comes the great white throne judgment. Um, I believe that divine mercy is, uh, I should say the feast of divine mercy within the liturgical calendar in regards to this is extremely important. Um, it is, uh, it's the ark, the church is the ark. And so, um, you know, basically what we're looking at is a remnant that's left. And so, uh, that's my understanding of the order of things, okay? I think that, um, uh, you know, France plays a pivotal role. I think that Rome plays a pivotal role. Jerusalem plays a pivotal role. Um, you know, if we're to believe the, the authentic Catholics within the, prof or with, with the authentic prophets within the Catholic Church, we, you know, there were a number of different sources that saw Rome destroyed. Now, it doesn't take very much thought or, you know, to think that, well, how could the United States allow that to happen? And really, there's only two. And one is that the United States is on the wrong side. Um, number two is um, we don't care. We just allow it to happen. I guess there's actually three. And the third being that we've been chastised so hard that we can't respond. And so... Um, you know, like I say, you don't have to think very far or very much about these things to kind of get a picture, you know. Um, the fact of the matter is, things will be just as Jesus said. There will be tribulation that has never been since the foundation of the world up until that day. Um, I would also note that it's really important to understand that a lot of the tribulation Jesus speaks about is spiritual in nature. Um, you notice when he comes, <laughs> you know, people are eating and drinking and giving in marriage and they're going to work and they're going about their daily lives. And so, um, you know, it'll be real normal to some people, but to those that have eyes to see, you know, it will be terrifying times um, because we will see a world that's basically non-existent of God. Um, where the church is suppressed and persecuted and pushed underground and, uh, and things like that. So there's, um, that's kind of the order, I guess, if you want to call it that. <coughs> I would never call it a timeline because a timeline basically um, puts things in, in a way that you can check them off. And um, with this whole thing, um, in regards to the apocalypse, you can't check things off because you have one thing going on while another's going on. And so it's very important that the book of Revelation doesn't start with the first seal being opened and then that seal happens and then it's done and then the second seal is opened and then that happens and it's done. It doesn't work that way. You know, the first seal happen, or is open and something happens 
and that continues to happen while the second seal is open. So it becomes layered in that sense. And so I think it's really, really important to understand that. Um, and, uh, and the most important thing, as I said, is to pray. Okay. You know, so I don't, again, I, I go about my life and I live my life in a way that, um, that I think God wants me to. And, and so, you know, when you read the scriptures and you look at, um, you know, what the church teaches of how to reach, um, sanctity is really what we need to be focused on we need to be focused on our interior life um our personal relationship with jesus and um and trying to better ourselves every day to become more holy um and receive the sacraments as much as as you can and and um and live at peace and enjoy you know um a lot of times we don't realize how far we've come um, because we're too busy looking at where we're at, you know, and that's not a bad thing in, in one sense, but in another sense, it can become a bad thing. Um, or we have the polar opposite where we spend the majority of our time looking out, trying to figure out these things because there are so many messages out there and so many, uh, seers and things of that nature, prophets, whatever you want to call them. Um, we can spend the majority, too much of our time looking into that and then we lose what's important, you know, and um, I think it's kind of revealed, was it through uh, Martha and Mary, right? You know, uh, Martha was worried about this and worried about that and is the food ready and I got to get the dishes out and, and, and she was missing the most important part and, and that's to sit down next to or face to face with, especially in the Blessed Sacrament, um, with Jesus and spend time with him and spend time listening to what he's saying to you. That's the most important thing. And, um, you know, if you want to hear God, all you have to do is, is look at where you, you know, you feel conviction in your heart. And that's really a grace. It's a, it's a, a grace of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and, and don't get so down on yourself to where you think it's impossible because nothing's impossible. The idea is to get up and just, you know, start taking steps, whether or not you're, you know, crawling on the ground or um, crawling on all fours or, you know, you finally have the strength to get up and walk and take a first step, even if it's a baby step. Those are the most important things. Um, not all these wild, um, you know, prophecies and announcements and um, declarations and all that stuff. That's not the most important thing. Um, God has no problem uh, warning his faithful and, and guiding them. And, and that's what we need to understand, uh, you know, in, in, in the sense of not letting it become so important that it becomes an obsession and takes away from what we should be doing um, or spending the majority of our time doing. And that's growing in holiness. If we're not in prayer, <laughs> there's, there's no way for that to happen. And so we have to, we have to pray. That's the most important thing. So um, I, I think I will be looking into um, some more of the authentic Catholic prophets. Um, I think I did read Anne Catherine Emmerich, Emmerich years ago. I read some of her stuff. Um, again, I, I would say this as well. One of the things that I found um, very, um, how do I say, that brought me a lot of peace with this is that a lot of the things that I studied doing this series, um, a lot of the scripture that was opened um, really confirmed to me a lot of the things that I had been shown. And so, you know, that was a good feeling in the sense of um, knowing that, that I, you know, I'm not, I'm not being deceived, you know, because I think the very beginning of this for myself you know, back in 2003, I think that was the main concern. You know, this is, this is coming from one of two places and it's not me. So it's either God or the devil. And so, you know, over the period of time, um, you know, it's really unveiled itself to be very, um, extraordinary grace that, that I don't deserve. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, thrilling in, in one sense. In another, it's extremely humbling. And, um, 
So again, uh, I would ask that you continue to pray for me uh, as I pray for you. Pray the chaplet of divine mercy every day and offer it in reparation for the sins committed by the United States and, and spend the majority of the time in prayer and uh, soul searching, you know, um, looking into your, into your own soul and where we can better ourselves. Um, I did tell you that I did reach out to Father Chris. Um, I did, and I did receive a call back from the Marians. I, I don't remember the man's name, but I think he was more of like a, like a filter, which is not uncommon for a priest like Father Chris that's so busy. Um, he's, he's got a lot on his plate. Um, so what they were talking about is, um, it was funny, so I think one of the viewers brought it up too, was a possibly a possible book, um, which isn't a bad idea, I guess. I mean, I'm not really a writer, um, but I, you know, I mean, if it all comes together as a book, I know there's, you know, an, a couple, uh, well, I don't know, a hundred or 200 pages, you know, that I had sent prior. And um, that dealt with divine mercy in the day of atonement. Um, in the eighth day octave, it was really into that theology, but it ties into all of this, you know, it actually would probably be a kind of cool thing to put together. Um, but uh, as far as the order of things, I'm gonna, I'll touch on this once more because I think it's really, really, really important. The order of, of the events of God happen no differently than they do the Jewish feasts. Okay, so um, Passover, Pentecost, the Day of Atonement, um, and then it moves into the Feast of Booths, you know, which is basically, I understand, to be a Eucharistic reign of Jesus during a period um, or uh, era of peace. Okay, I think that's important to understand. Um, God doesn't do anything different, you know. Um, even the harvests of the earth, you know, um, we are the wheat. We are the grapes, we are the, the, you know, the wine, we are the olives, we are the, <laughs> uh, we're the salt of the earth, all that stuff. So even the harvest of souls happens in stages and it happens in the same order that, that uh, the way God set it up um, at the beginning. And so, you know, when you, when you get into the seals and you, you know, a, a, you know, a ration of wheat costs a day's pay and, um, you know, a loaf of barley, whatever it is, costs a day's pay. And then it says, but do not damage the olive oil or the wine. That has to do with the harvest. And it's a harvest of souls. Okay, so the olives and the wine uh, basically happened later in the year. And so, again, there's an understanding of, of the Old Testament. I would recommend that everybody read the book of Leviticus. It, there's a lot that's revealed there. Um, specifically with the ark, um, even the scriptures, they go so far as to speak of the ark almost as a separate person, you know? And so there's, again, there's mysteries within the scriptures that are revealed, um, uh, just powerful things. And so you know, all of our Catholic faith is revealed right there in Leviticus, um, the rules for the Day of Atonement feast and all that stuff. So it's not always just looking at the book of Revelation or authentic prophets in the church or the gospel. There's a lot that's revealed in the Old Testament, you know, under the first and second layer of scripture. And so, you know, um, study scripture in the different senses and, and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, the Lord really begins to reveal things. So anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. And, um, you know, maybe we'll put something together uh, similar, looking into some of the other prophets and, and um, within the church and, and, you know, doing kind of the same thing we did now. But um, as far as I can tell, I'm just going to be honest with you. After looking at these authentic prophecies within the Catholic Church concerning a monarch king, a holy pope, a war, you know, a great war or battle that takes place, um, I don't see any way around it. I think it's extremely solid. Um, again, I'm just a, a lay person, no different than anyone else. Um, I know the priest that I sent it to thought it was very solid, didn't see anything wrong with it. And again, what they're looking for is, does, you know, does it go against any teaching or dogma of the Catholic Church? 
And so they're not going to look at it and say, oh yeah, you figured it all out. That's not the way all of that works. They want to know if anything is not in accordance with the teaching of the Catholic Church. And if there's anything revealed through that, okay, that will review, reveal mysteries and prophetic utterances to the church, then they'll hold on to those, okay? Um, uh, anything else, they just, you know, you'd kind of do away with. We're taught that by St. Paul. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, if you did, give this video a thumbs up. And, um, and uh, just stay focused, you know, stay awake. Because, you know, I think it's, it's pretty clear um, you know, what's going on in the world. The thing with Roe v. Wade was enormous. And, and that, um, I mean, <laughs> hundreds of thousands of children have been saved in a week. And there's just no other way around it. It's just a fact. And hopefully a lot of them are male and hopefully a lot of them will be priests in the Catholic Church. So, uh, again, just stay awake and pray. You know, as I said, Things when you when you look at the tribulation, and it, it's just you know it's going to be a very hard time, and Jesus told us that. But we have to understand at the same time, God the Father is love. God is love, and would never give anything to the world and or to us that wasn't for our own good, that wasn't in accordance with His will, and uh, and be able to to protect those who love him while keeping the ungodly under, under punishment, okay? Those who love God were never, are not destined for wrath. You know, it's not say that some faithful may not be swept away in the wrath, um, but even if that were the case, God knows how to make it to where he, it's not wrath to you, you know? Um, <laughs> so he has a way of doing these things and that's what he does he works miracles and he saves souls so um you know let's just continue to pray for the conversion of the world for the church um for the pope uh for our bishops and our cardinals um and especially the ones that are in error um and pray for the good priests that we know as well the voices that are speaking that god give them courage and strength and um Anyway, keep the faith, love God, and uh, love your neighbor. May God bless you, may he keep you, may he cause his face to shine upon you, and may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.